Hey there, YouTube. I got a video coaching review here today. If you haven't seen these before, it's basically where somebody will send me a video of them shooting or looking for some guidance in regards to archery. And then I sit down here at my desk and give a video response of what I see, whether that be in their form, helping them with training, tuning questions, things like that. Anything really that they submit to me, I do my best to answer in a video response like this. And if you're interested in checking these out or any of the other coaching options I do offer, you can head to my website, jakekaminski.com, where you can find more information on that. So I've got two of these here from Andreas. This one is from a couple of months ago. And then there's also going to be a follow-up one where he comes back and submits more stuff within the next couple of months. And then you can actually see his form progress. So it's kind of cool. So if he continues to do that, I'll continue to post them on my channel for everybody to enjoy. And it's just kind of neat to see the progression so far. So anyway, let's get to it and enjoy. Hey there, Andreas. Thanks for submitting a video coaching review. Much appreciated. Also, thank you for uh, doing uh, Own the Podium Patron. Also appreciated. They'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, available indefinitely forever. So feel free to come back and view them as often as possible. And if you have any questions, just feel free to just uh, reply to one of the messages and let me know what you've got questions about. So I'll look at your email overview first, and then I'll check some of your videos and see what you got going on. So uh, yes, I know you're Springer, and last year you started. Last year you started. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> tired. I have coffee here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so you started in a club run by Trad Bow Archers. You didn't like their style. S discovered my videos and they feel better, more natural. Good. I'm glad. On the basis of the videos, you continue to train. As I say, there are so many details in the videos. It does overwhelm beginners. So you're just working on your bare bow form and only your form. No shooting at targets. That's cool. Fortunately, you, you have the patience. That's excellent. Uh, the most important thing for you is good form. Shooting at targets isn't so important at first. I agree, and I'm glad that's the case for you. So you're shooting a very light bow, 16 pounds of draw weight, and 27 and a half draw length. You see lots of arrows in your form. That's normal, and especially in the beginning, even though you've been shooting last year, since last year, it's normal for years to see form flaws in your videos. It's a great way to coach yourself, and it's a great way to start to develop as an archer, <clears throat> not just to fix your own stuff, but you know, just in general to pay attention to your own form all the time is very beneficial. So you, you want to do that and continue to do that forever. As I edit my videos as I'm shooting, I pick out my own flaws as well, so that's normal. So lately you're trying to pay attention to T position back tension, uh, solid anchor, uh, deep shoulder bow arm, and the torso rotation, and then all together just be calm and concentrated on the shooting cycle, shot cycle. Good. <laughs> so you are looking for help on your form, so not too much on details, hopefully, and a guide for the next couple of months, basically. All right, sounds good. Let's get rid of this, and let's pull up one of your videos here. Uh, let's start with the first one. I'll just start from the first and continue to the last. I'm not sure when is which for you as far as uh, most recent or not. I know you were gonna send me some more videos. I'm not sure if I jumped the gun and reviewed them too quickly, but please let me know if you'd like me to check out another one. Overall, not too bad on this one here. Yeah, it's not too bad at all, actually. Uh, your overall position is great. I wouldn't go for any lower of an elbow. Uh, right now, you're basically as low as I would possibly go at the very moment. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Had to uh, pause the video for a second. So I wouldn't go any lower on the elbow. The main reason is if you were to draw a line from the tip of your elbow to roughly your index finger or so and continue that line through, you can see how it, it uh, intersects with your bow grip, which is excellent. Any lower than that, and then that line starts to go above the grip and it becomes inefficient to have that elbow too low. So I think you're good there. Shoulder positions look good. I wouldn't change a whole lot. I will uh, check from a few different views to see what's going on. I'm not sure what you're doing in the lower extremities, so I'm gonna have to check and see 
how your uh, legs are. I'm not sure if your knees are locked or not. It's very important to make sure they are. It's just hard to see. It looks like you're all right. The hips do rotate a little bit. Let me move this video up so you can see. So what I'm mainly looking at is as you draw the bow back, do the hips stay still? Uh, they need to stay still throughout the drawing cycle, especially as you're pulling the bow back and lifting the bow and rotating. And then also through release, you need to make sure that the hips stay still. So we'll check that. They rotate a little bit as you go to draw the bow. So your main thing to look at is see how the hips are kind of pointed over here-ish. And then as you go to draw, see how they rotate a little bit? Just that little bit, they rotate towards the target. So make sure that you can review my Bare Bow Form Series set position, stance, and posture, and I talk about how to engage with the hips, a hip tuck tearing the paper towels apart quickly. It is feet flat on the ground, one foot on each square of a paper towel with the perforated line in the middle where you would tear it. You wanna feel your feet sink into the ground and then pull those apart uh, with a moderate amount of intensity in set position. So that means you should start it right here before you get ready, actually right about now. Right when you look at the target is when you should start to engage your legs and, and tear those paper towels. That's what I would would uh, work on for that. Now, as far as your actual position, you end up in a good spot here. I think you can start this rotation here, that, that rotation right there as the sh front bow shoulder moves forward and this shoulder moves around. I think you can start that rotation earlier from here. As you lift the bow, start to rotate. So don't just go here to here to here to then pull. You don't quite do that because you've been doing it enough and focused enough that it looks more fluid. But the idea is to go from set position and as you're lifting the bow, start to turn. So start to turn from now to here and then just draw the bow back. So trying to work on more of a engagement and a rotation earlier in the shot as you're lifting the bow, not necessarily through the first motion, but as you start to get more towards level with this arm and hit the apex, rotate down and then start to draw. So don't start stop here to then have to do all of this. Just start that rotation a little bit earlier. It'll feel a little bit more fluid for you in the shot process itself. I wouldn't be too careful drawing either. Make sure you're focused on this spot in your shoulder, the back side of your shoulder, the mid part of your arm, somewhere in this area on the land too. Move that and pull with some power and authority behind you. Being that this bow is very lightweight, it takes you a considerable amount of time to draw the bow back. I know you're trying to emulate form, so obviously you're probably doing it slower than you would if you were to just pull the bow back. But I want you to be able to just pull the bow back, get to power, get to full draw, then anchor. Don't be too careful. It looks to me like you're really trying to draw the arrow back instead of pull the bow back because this follows the arrow line, whereas normally that elbow will drop slightly as you draw because you're pulling with power to then anchor, if that makes sense. So instead of pulling like along the arrow line with that elbow following straight, Pull through the bow, through the bow, bow grip, and use this to pull back, and you'll see the elbow drop, and then you can come into anchor as opposed to pulling like this. So from this perspective, if the target was that way, instead of pulling like this, pull with the shoulder, and you'll see how it drops. The elbow comes down and around because it's more efficient to follow this line as you go to pull, especially from this high line like you draw from, which is fine. Just don't pull on the arrow line. I want you to pull from the grip and pull to the, the shoulder. Get the bow back and then anchor. Don't be so pulling on the arrow, basically. You don't want to pull from the arrow. Because <clears throat> you can tell as you go to here, it's all in a straight line as you're going to draw. See how the elbow moves straight around? 
and comes up into anchor, that elbow should drop down. And what you're doing is you're kind of jamming stuff up in the system and creating a little bit of excess tension. And you can see from here, watch your, even your shoulder goes up as you draw and it jams up into this area instead of using more down here. Pull with the shoulder and lead with the shoulder through the bow grip, not on the arrow line. So there's that rotation. So your end position is great, but you're so far out here. You can see how far out like this you are. So instead, rotate. So lift and rotate and then draw. Don't stay so far out to then have this whole motion because that's a lot of energy that's required. And once you get you know a good amount of bow weight, draw weight on, it's going to be exhausting to be this far out. It's just going to be really, really tough. So from here, I would, you can see also, look at your hand, your bow hand. From this view, it gives a good idea. As you go to lift the bow, the bow hand does move up straight, which is good. But as you go to draw, watch the bow hand now. See how far it moves to the left? That bow hand should never be to the right of the target as you go to lift the bow. So <clears throat> if you are the target, if I'm here in set position, see how you're the target and my hand is directly below you, the target. So as I go to lift, my bow hand moves up, it stays there, and then I rotate and draw. So my hand doesn't do this. Right now you're out here and you do this. Again, that far out position. And then as you draw, this happens. So that bow hand should not be moving like this. The bow hand should move up, rotate, draw. So the hand isn't moving left or right at all. It just goes up and towards the target, not to the right to then come left. That will also save you lots of energy and build you a lot of efficiency in the system if you can stop uh, that whole real far outside lift. The bow hand moving up straight is great, but it should move up straight between you and the target, and then that left movement shouldn't happen at all. And then you'll save a lot of energy. And because of that, the bow reaction wants to jump to the right, so it's a little weak as far as the reaction is concerned. And even as you're letting go, you can see this bow arm moving to the right, the bow reacting to the right, and so on. So you want to make sure that your pin or your sight or your, your arrow is in the middle where you're looking. And as you go to let go, you want to be as stable and as still as possible. You don't want that movement to the right. Now, maybe that's just a freak shot. Let's go to the next one, see if it does the same thing. Generally, the bow is going to want to go back to where it was as you're drawing the bow. And because you started over here, that might be why it shoots that way as you let go. I think that looked very similar, less though. See how the bow hand collapses this direction as you're starting to let go? You lose the tension back here for stability, and you can actually see you're also grabbing the bow before you let go. So just let it happen. Don't do anything on the front half. Let's jump forward to a later video. See how the bow is pointing to the right? and then it moves to the left as you draw. You want to try to keep that hand straight to where you want it to go. Your alignment is great. Body position, posture is fine. You just want to make sure you stay engaged as you go to let go. Don't let this collapse, this movement happen before you let go. <clears throat> Here's an even later video, I believe. Bow hand still is moving to the left. The draw was better. Just rotate as you lift, set in, lead with the shoulder, draw from the, the grip through the backside of the shoulder, keep the tension, let the process happen. And when you let go, you're just letting go of the string but maintaining the tension here. You're not losing it anywhere else. The bow hand looked better. You didn't grab the grip on that one. Still looks like it's moving to the right, right before you let go. 
and you want to not start moving here until you let go. On this one you didn't collapse, but the elbow, see like that, it starts to move dramatically as you're letting go. So it's like, let go instead of let go and come around. So it should be let go, but the continuous motion happens. The motion shouldn't happen before you let go. This is normal. That's part of the process is learning how to deal with these kind of things, learning how to make slight changes without compromising elsewhere by moving too much. So I think start, <clears throat> the main thing is going to be the lift of the bow. The bow goes straight up, you rotate and draw back. Don't pull to the right to then come back. Also, don't stay so far out to then rotate. Rotate as you lift, get into good alignment. These three points in this position, you should be in great alignment. This wrist, this shoulder, and this sh shoulder should be in a straight line once you get up here before you draw the bow back. Right now, it's definitely in a triangle like this as opposed to in a line like this, then draw the bow back. Once you do that, I think it'll help fix the bow moving upon release and just have the idea and the principle to Keep the tension, let the string just cut through your fingers, but to keep the tension going. Don't add any more, don't lose anything, and don't affect it at all, the best you can, obviously. So I hope that helps. I hope this gives you a starting point at least to focus on for the next bit of time. I don't think it'll take you two to three months to make these adjustments. And again, if you have any questions, please just ask and I'd be happy to respond. Uh, good luck and let me know how I can help.